Hello, welcome to this video on Overhide Ledger where we introduce the Ledger's JS library and demo it. Uh, this video continues from a previous video on Ledger based authorization and deals specifically with Overhide Ledger, which is a pseudonymous receipt ledger for fiat money for US dollars transactions. Starting on the medium.com article, once again linked below, uh, this is the article we partially used in the previous video to introduce ledger-based authorizations. To quickly recap ledger-based authorization, once again, we have a user logging into an app client. They're probably using a wallet such as MetaMask to uh, authenticate and sign for their public address. And then that information is transferred to the app backend in order to verify the authentication as well as to go to the ledger itself and authorize. As such, the application backend sends authorization or authorization tiers back to the app client to say, yes, this user can use whatever functionality requires payment or whatever authorization tier. Since this video is about overhide ledger and overhide ledger doesn't actually deal with value transfer, it deals with pseudonymous receipts on the ledger. Uh, let's see how that happens as an overview using diagrams. Uh, so I'm just scrolling down to figure five here. We're going to skip over actual implementation information. And uh, here's a workflow of the fiat side. This is the, the interaction with the payment gateway. And to go through this workflow, I'm also going to show uh, the actual overhead ledger. So I'm going to be jumping between browser tabs a little bit. Um, so this is the fiat side right here. And this is the crypto side, the Ethereum side that is also involved. So the two sides are involved together in onboarding an application developer, a service provider, and to have the user of that app pay the service provider. So let's start with the service provider, the app developer trying to onboard. They would go to ohledger.com. They will either provide a public address, a public Ethereum address, um, from their wallet for which they will sign through their wallet or they will generate a new address and they will also be asked to uh, fill out a bunch of forms from a payment gateway. The payment gateway that Overhide Ledger uses is Stripe and there's a whole onboarding process with Stripe that needs to happen and this is just the reality of the fiat world. In conjunction with this whole world of Stripe and fiat money where the account ID is where the money is received by the app developer uh, as I mentioned, there's the whole Ethereum side to it where we're dealing with public addresses and secret keys. And in this world, the public address is the actual two address on the on the receipt, on the ledger transaction that represents the pseudonymous receipt uh, from some app user. So I think that's enough looking at diagrams. Let's just quickly go through the actual practical of this. So I'll go to overhideledger.com. So actually, this is the test one. If I just go ohledger.com, um, you know, this is the, the production version. This is where you're um, able to actually onboard yourself as an app developer uh, or go make a payment. So we're open here to making a payment to pay someone. Uh, but uh, if we go to get paid, this is where we can sign up to get paid. If we open up this informative little infographic, uh, we sort of see uh, uh, where to go. So we're already learning and motivating through YouTube. Uh, we see that we need to integrate this Ledger.js library uh, in order to have uh, a nice integration and receive payments. Uh, so we're at the step of where we need to generate an address or use our wallet and uh, we want to register with Stripe. So let's just go ahead and do that. But I'm going to jump back to the test network as I don't want to do this uh, with real credit cards. So let's try this. So now I'm at test.ohledger.com uh, slash reap, or it will just get uh, redirected there. And I'll generate a new address. This is me. I'm getting, I'm the app developer and I'm going to get paid. I'll copy the address. So of course you need to copy both the address and the secret key in order to uh, prove that you own this address that you just generated. Um, and we can skip these features they're more advanced and we'll just click the big blue button to say register to receive payments with stripe we click that 
we get a reminder just make sure you know to write down or copy and paste uh, your ethereum address which is also used for your us dollars transactions on uh, with overhead ledger and uh, your secret key we got it we continue and we're taking it to stripe so now we have this big fiat form to fill out and uh, luckily we're on the test network so we can just skip this form we can make pretend that we just filled it up in the re in the in the main net of course you have to fill it out and stripe will validate that you're you're eligible to receive payments and whatnot and then you just deal with stripe for that so we've been added uh, as an app developer as a service provider to receive payments and uh, the overhead ledger here will will contain all the receipts in order to to make payments uh, to someone with the ledger, we just go to go go pay someone, and here we can do the same thing: either use our our wallet or we, that supports Web3, or generate a new address and secret key. I hit the generate button here, and uh, we can either switch to pay provider or use the the free ledger transaction option. The free ledger transaction is the concept where we still need a receipt that a human being did generate a transaction so as to um, eliminate spammers um, and it doesn't cost anything it just costs five seconds of your time let's go back to paying a provider so since this is still the test network uh, we are not going to use our real visa i'll pay two, two us dollars and i have the address of the provider that I registered myself as so I pasted that address in here and then I'm just going to pay with stripe okay we do want to make the payment here we will just enter an email address uh, since this is a testnet we don't need that 4242 is the visa number Put in some date in the future, put in 222 as your CVC, pay with Stripe, and now the payment goes through. So let's say we come back later and we want to check that what who we paid. Uh, as long as we have our public address, and this is the public address I just paid two dollars with, I can click on show transactions and I can see that I did make in fact a payment to whoever 0x8DC is. So that's the pseudonymous receipt that we discussed. So now this this application at lohledger.com, it's all fine and dandy, but at the end of the day, we wanted to integrate this into our application. So in order to do that, we need the, to use the Ledger's JS JavaScript library that's available at NPM. And the library allows you to to use overhead ledger itself with ethereum wallets or just without a wallet but with ethereum addresses or to use the mainnet or testnet uh, ring b testnet from ethereum itself so it enables uh, payments for fiat money today and cryptocurrencies tomorrow and more cryptocurrencies will come a main deliverable of ledger's js is that it's ledger agnostic so the developer only has to write their code once regardless of what ledger they want to use uh, so here we have just a little diagram of the deployment we have a, a browser with ledger's js sitting in the browser uh, talking to the remuneration api uh, the remuneration api is just two simple calls that abstract uh, various ledgers and uh, the backend is only written once to call these two simple calls regardless of what ledger the user wants to use and the front, front end is only written once uh, to call the Ledger's JS library. The remuneration API is just two simple HTTP calls, get transactions, which get tallies from a ledger, and a signature valid, which checks if a public address is signed properly. And the demo uses the test networks for both Ethereum and US dollars. For Ethereum, it uses uh, Ringby, and the swagger for Ringby, for the Ringby node is here, we can see the APIs. Same for US dollars. Uh, there are a couple more calls uh, to interact with the Ledger's JS, but here are the two APIs. So part of this uh, library, there is a demo, a play-by-play run-through uh, to show a, a sample application of how this works. 
So let's just quickly see how this integration looks in the demo. Um, the link to the demo is right here in the npm ledgers.js library link on GitHub as well. And of course, uh, I'll put it in the description below. So this is the demo. It's a cake game. A uh, little bit overview of this game. Uh, it's it's a developer demo. So in this window here in the upper right corner is where we will see logs. So basically every time in the JavaScript of this game that I use a log command, it it will log something and appear in this window. This is the source code view. Right now there is a welcome screen and it kind of describes what this demo is about. But if I click on any of these uh, log messages, I'll be taken to the log message so that I can see the source code around there. And the intention here is to see what the various um, callbacks and, 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 and handlers look like uh, for the ledgers.js. And it's to quickly or quicker onboard developers that want to integrate it into their application. So let's just go through this game a little bit. What we see is that the cake game offers a common cake for free an epic cake for two US dollars and a legendary cake for 50 cents per 24 hours. Um, we see that Ethereum is actually not available and that's because our MetaMask is not currently uh, connected to the browser, which is fine, but we, we can pay with US dollars for overhype. So let's see, let's see how that works out. Um, we will not go to ohledger.com or use our credentials from there because this is meant to simulate an actual user coming to your game and they will not be going to ohledger.com, they will be using your login screen. So they will generate a new user key in secret and copy it over or the browser will remember this, this stuff for them. Hopefully they copy it over to their password manager. And uh, if you're interested to see what exactly happened with the code in terms of ledgers.js, you can see that when we click to generate, uh, there was a, a log message saying, the UI has asked to generate and uh, we basically called the ledgers.js library which is uh, the variable OH$ dollar sign inside of this uh, JavaScript to call generate cred credentials with the OH ledger and um, what happens then is the ledgers.js uh, goes in, generates a new address, generates a new secret key and calls a callback which is sig uh, signified through this OH uh, log message. If we click on this message, we can see what the parameters were passed in. So basically the callback provides credentials and these credentials are printed out here as part of uh, this object, which is what you see in the log message. So you can keep on um, learning Ledger.js and how to use it just by looking at these log messages. Uh, let's just go ahead and get into the game for free. What this shows is a ledgers.js goes to ohledger.com backend and renders this uh, iframe. And uh, this is to make sure that the user that's coming into the game for free is not a robot, not a spammer. Create entry. And now we're in the, the actual game, the business logic of the game. Uh, this is still just another web page that's rendered and some information here, just like before. Once again, we have the same screen set up and there's a bunch of information explaining what just happened. If we click on play a level, we're rewarded with a statement that the common cake is a lie. Oh, too bad. Now, in this game, we're back in the browser. This is supposedly the back end. But of course, the browser is not a protected execution environment. Uh, even though in here we do go out to the remuneration API for both Ethereum and Overhead Ledger to verify authorizations. And this is how we've determined that this person is only authorized for a common cake. Uh, this is not something you would ever want to do in browser uh, as anybody can just change your code, decompile it and uh, modify it and your authorization code would just not matter. Similarly, if we go back to the login, um, it gets reset. But entering the secret key here is not ideal, considering that uh, if you put in your secret key here for Ethereum, uh, from your Ethereum address, uh, how do you know if you can trust me as the app developer? Well, you can look at the source code in this app, but for any app out there, um, this is not ideal. 
So what we want to do really is to use our wallet. In this case, I'm going to use MetaMask off screen. I'm just going to connect it to this app. And what happens now is, uh, yeah, we get a little message here, connect with the wallet. But what happens now is we get the address from the wallet. And what also happens is Ethereum is all of a sudden enabled as a choice for payment. Um, these spinny bars indicate, hey, look at your wallet. You need to sign to prove that you own this address. This is not a signing for a transaction. It's just a signature to say, yeah, you do, do own the address. And so I'll sign for that. This is just a wallet workflow. And uh, well, now I now I can do Ethereum. So let's try that. So if I click Ethereum, um, once again, I need to sign for the address. And uh, what I see is prices in Ethereum, in Ether. Um, now the prices are static here. They're pretty dated. It's way more than 50 cents, uh, at least today. Um, but let's just uh, go in and buy a Epic cake. So what happens is because I clicked Epic, I was told once again to check the wallet, uh, just in case the wallet doesn't pop up, but it does pop up and I see it here. You don't see it on the video. I'll sign once again saying the message that I see from, from this K game, it says verify ownership of address by signing on and then timestamp. And this is to just make sure that the person knows that they're not signing a transaction. They're just signing for, um, uh, for, uh, logging in. I'm sorry. Now what we have next is, is another wallet pop up saying, Hey, now you need to pay your 0 0.013 ethers in order plus the gas in order to be, uh, eligible for the, um, I think we chose the Epic cake. So I'll confirm that this is on the ring B test net. So that's not an issue. And, uh, the spinning bar should go away and we should get in, uh, after the transaction, obviously this takes longer now. So this is, um, going against the Ethereum ledger. So the login takes a little bit longer, but now we're in the cake game itself. And, uh, we can look in the log to see what happened. And, uh, right here, we see that the ledger being used was F web three. This was the address. The validation was happening right here and we got authorized. So if uh, we check the, the level now, I just refreshed the browser because since this is a demo, there was a caching issue with the Firefox. If I see if I just press the five and it says the legendary cake is a lie. So that's perfect. Uh, of course, if this was a real backend, you wouldn't have that caching issues. Well, this concludes this video on the overhead ledger, the ledger's JS library, the remuneration API, and the demo that ties it all together. Thanks kindly for your time. Thank you for watching. Take care.